So Avatar Jafar has a name and his backstory is super interesting. Hey all, welcome to The Geek Talk. Today I wanted to talk about Avatar Sito, who featured prominently in The Rise of Kyoshi and then more prominently in Shadow of Kyoshi. As some of you know him as, it's Avatar Jafar. He was a previous fire avatar predating Avatar Roku. He's a guy with the weird top hat, which turns out to be a minister's hat, which is part of the reason why he's so interesting because he isn't noted for, you know, his great abilities with bending, even though we saw him, you know, bending for volcano plumes or whatever. But his whole thing, his thing, his claim to glory is his political successes. So let's read some passages from the book. The viewing party stopped at Avatar Sito, depicted in his trademark tall minister's hat, where most of the other figures held a ball of fire in one hand, avatars and fire lords alike, Sito hefted an abacus. And I thought this was a really good imagery because yes, if you're looking at the Fire Nation Hall where we see most of the Fire Lords and you see how they depict their level of power with, you know, balls of flames, which are probably a, an allusion to Agni Kai or success in Agni Kai or just general firebending prowess. For Sito, we have a completely different kind of image and he's holding basically a calculator, an old school calculator. <laughs> basically, he's being put on a pedestal for being a complete nerd and I kind of love that. Rendered with as much loving detail as one of the illustrated flames or weapons wielded by his compatriots, each bead of the counting instrument was set with real pearl, and they were racked to a calculation that ended in an auspicious number. See, I thought that was really cool that we got to get the idea of his backstory. Not necessarily we're getting, you know, everything, but then the prose, which is why I like FCE's writing a lot, alludes to what he was doing, or at least um, it, 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 it lets us get ready for the explanation that we're about to get for like, you know, the next page or so. So why did Sito do this? Why did he want to become a political figurehead instead of, you know, going around all the world and the nations and doing what most other avatars have done in the past? During Sito's childhood years, the Fire Nation teetered on the verge of collapse, struck by plague and natural disaster. The wrath of the spirits was terrible, and Fire Lord Yosor was in little position to halt the fracturing of the country along the old fault lines of the clans. The clans? Kiyoshi said. So if you guys don't know, the original, original Fire Nation, before it even was a Fire Nation, was just a collection of separate Fire Lords, which of course I think this is probably an allusion to the old Warlords of Japan um, and other, you know, war factions that happened within the old Asian, East Asian history. So this connects to what we already discovered in the Smoke and Shadow comics where we got backstory about who these Warlords were and how they dealt with what they dealt with. Uh, it got so bad to a point where one of the Warlords uh, stole children from another village who was not paying him tribute because that's kind of how it worked. It was basically like a feudal fire nation before it was a fire nation. And in doing so and kidnapping those children, dark spirits named the Kumuri Kaje came and stole his own children. Kind of similar to uh, if you think about the Moses stuff and you think about uh, the Pharaoh having, well, instead of kids being stolen there, the, the kids were, the firstborn was killed, which is pretty dark. But hey, this is what I actually like about Avatar, and I talk about this all the time. I really like their world building. I like how they integrate spirits into the natural world and have them actually affect. And there's always, every village has its own story about a certain Avatar, dark Avatar spirit, and this is no different for the Fire Nations. And so, in reading this uh, portion of the Shadow of Kyoshi book, you can understand why the Fire Nation would be afraid of the spirits being mad at them and bringing natural disasters to the land and how they would want to stop that and how they would want to appease it. And it's kind of one of the reasons why the Fire Nation is so efficient and loyal and, and honor bound as they are because they've had this dark past that has been influenced by dark spirits. Each noble house of the Fire Nation is descended from one of the old warlords from the period before the country was united. This is why the noble clans retain certain rights such as governance of their home islands and the retention of the household troops. During Lord Yosor's reign, the clans set their warriors against each other, ravaging the countryside in feudal bids for power and resources. Many historians, myself included, opine that without Sito's intervention, the Fire Islands would have splintered apart, reverting to the dark days of Toast the Cruel and the other pre-unification warlords who caused so much suffering for our people. And of course, Toes is one of the people that we learned, the main warlord that we learn about in Smoke and Shadow. Which, by the way, if you want to review my review for that, it's somewhere around here. And so what's cool about this and what kind of leads into Sito and his rule is that he made a very specific effort not to go across the entire world like most avatars do and, you know, quell conflicts and 
the Earth and the North and the South and the Air Nomads, although when have the Air Nomads ever had conflict? They're always really <laughs> pretty much in harmony. Why don't we just all be like Air Nomads? But yes, he made a very concentrated effort to keep his attention and his entire lifetimes, his life's work, his legacy in the Fire Nation and the Fire Nation only. Though as the Avatar, his material needs would have been met and his decrees heeded, Sito took a government post as a minister of the royal court, technically subject to the same rules and regulation as any other official. He showed up to work at the capital and sat at a desk. Furthermore, he insisted that his career advance at the pace of his achievements rather than leapfrogging his seniors just because he was the avatar. So of course we read this and we go like, wow, this guy's an awesome dude. Like he's he's actually working through the ranks. He is going from the bottom of the you know political sphere of the Fire Nation. He's not just going like, well, I'm the avatar. I'm going to take the top position and you know I'm going to influence what's going to happen. No, he actually went from the bottom rung and worked his way up, which is better because, and I always like this about stories, is that when we see someone actually make the natural progression and actually go through the training and actually Actually go through the experience that they need to be able to successfully do whatever job they're trying to do it's something that i'm critical of of both avatar and of, of, of avatar last airbender and Korra because sometimes i feel like you know people's progression can be too quickly whether we're talking about the bending arts or even yeah their ability to overrule um or oversee something and i love that we have this idea here that sito specifically did not want to leapfrog he wanted to actually go through each step one by one and then be bestowed the 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 title of ed, i think uh, it's the uh, advanced minister or like the prime minister or whatever they call him in uh, i think the prime advisor is what they call him in the book rather than chase emergencies all over the nation he concentrated his efforts on a central location and spread his influence from there sita was an extremely capable bureaucrat accountant and diplomat and since he was working for the royal family there was no split in legal and spiritual authority in the country his victories were the fire lord's victories and then it goes on to say the thing about the grand advisor that i was speaking about before once he was promoted to Grand Advisor, Avatar Sito was able to end the open hostilities between rival noble houses. A lasting peace followed in which he continued to serve his country with dignity and excellence. And that's what I think is just really cool that he would do that. And it makes me appreciate him as an Avatar. It's great. It's crazy how much this story is doing for Avatars. As you guys saw in my previous video with Karuk, we get so much insight into why he isn't as terrible as we were led to believe. And then we also get, you know, little insights about Avatar Sito. And also just seeing that, you know, different avatars had different ways of ruling and I think it actually was intelligent for him to focus on Fire Nation because yes if that does fall out of balance if you know that nation crumbles then you're gonna have an issue with dark spirits coming about and then that can leak out to the rest of the world so it is good that he said hey let me like put a pause on things going on in the rest of the world I gotta you know you know check back with home base make sure that we're good here and then maybe you know if he can you know quell that situation then he can go out to the rest of the nations but obviously I think this was like a lifelong project that he needed to instill which is great because then he led that into Yang Chen who had a pretty good reign for human affairs if you guys know what I'm talking about and of course we get to see some of his political political achievements in the case of the economy. He put an end to the debasement of coins, Rangi said, and rescued the economy from the brink of disaster. One of the scrolls we passed on the way here said he set up the first official programs to give relief to the peasantry in the times of famine, Jipan said. And this is great because it's it's basically showing that not, not only is he ruling for the benefit of the, the royal family and making sure that they're all keeping the peace, but he's also basically creating welfare for like the not so well off people because I think there is a secret sequence in the book where they're talking about the idea of surplus and how most of that surplus goes to either the capital or to the royal family itself but doesn't actually trickle down to some of the less well-off islands who might not have produced as much that year and how they're kind of losing their way in what Sito kind of uh, you know brought up and then to end off this video and also the last quote that I'm gonna read from the book it says truly Avatar Sito was an ideal for us officials to live up to a shining example of Fire Nation values in general efficiency precision and loyalty so yeah what did you guys think about Avatar Sito and his backstory and the expansion of that did you think it was a good decision for him to focus on the Fire Nation or do you think he should have spread out a little bit more for the rest of the nations I like him personally I think he's an awesome character I like that we got to see a more politically minded uh, as a forethought avatar versus seeing what we usually see with avatars who have to deal with dark spirits or fighting and stuff like that. I, I'm always intrigued with the political intrigue kind of stuff. But that is it, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Uh, comment below of what you think about Avatar Sito, uh, aka Avatar Jafar, in the comments below. And as always, peace, 
love, and remember, be water, my friends.